Smart War Games here. Some viewers requested um, a general guide for combat mission games. And yeah, let's do it. I have a table of content here, what I will cover in this guide. And if you have questions, uh, something is still unclear, you can comment. I won't cover um, in-game tutorials, how to move orders, how to move your units. Uh, I think there's already enough content on YouTube covering this, this specific aspect and almost every combat mission game comes also with a really good um, introduction campaign I recommend to play if you're new and which is supplemented by a, by a, a manual section where you teach some basics and teach tactics. I think that it's often skipped because um, not, it's not so usual to for people um, in this in this time uh, to to use some manual. You know, most people are um, used to excessive hand holding, and um, the game has to tell them everything. But um, do it. This this um, open the manual, find a section, and do this campaigns, perhaps print it out or have it on your smartphone and I think it's really helpful even for advan advanced players to learn something new about tactics. So let's proceed. I won't make time stamps for this but if there is a friendly user watching this and he may um, provide some time stamps would be really cool. Let's begin with purchase. Combat mission games aren't on Steam or Amazon whatever you need to get them directly from the developer, battlefront.com and here you can check the games you've, you find interest in and create an account and if you decide it you can go for a purchase you can get a disk version if you if you desire so with manual, printed manual I think everything or you can go it the easy quick way and um, go for a download version. Uh, you can use PayPal or credit card. I personally like to use PayPal and did it for all my purchases. And then you can, you will receive a download link instantly and a license key. And if there are some issues, for whatever reasons, you can go to the support tab and either um, visit the forums to look for your problem or contact the help desk and these guys are really friendly and help uh, quick usually res they respond um, under one day at least in my cases if there's something and yeah that's it you will receive an executable download and um, email and on your on your account the license keys and you can download them also later on it's not a one time or something you will always have access to it Okay, and that's it. After that, you will go for an installation and activation. Installation, it's a general recommendation for me is to install your games on a SSD, solid state disk. They are much quicker when it comes to loading times and perhaps also in game performance. I didn't do comparisons, but loading times they are definitely quicker and I like to use them and you you don't need to get a big at least for combat mission you don't need to get a big SSD it's okay if you have 64 gig uh, 64 gigabyte or 128 as combat combat mission installations allow you to move the folders when they are, once they installed and activated you can move them onto other um, hard disks of your computer and later on copy them. For example, you want to play uh, Italy, you can move it to your SSD and these folders, especially modded and with user content, can get quite big. And you just have a small SSD and you play it Italy for the new Rome to Victory release coming up. And then you decide, okay, I want to play Comet Mission Normandy again. You can cut and paste them towards your regular hard disk and move the Normandy folder to your quicker and faster SSD and it will work. There's no issues with that. Except a small issue for reshade, but we will talk about this later. 
Okay, when you installed um, the game and installed the patches, if there, are, if there are some, they always try to keep their installation files up to date, but sometimes so small patches you can get separately. You may proceed to activation and you ask what what's what's activation. There's um, also some criticism um, if you mention combat mission and people who don't know much about it. Um, first criticism or big criticism point is always um, the DRM and the activation. Ah, oh, it's a game I need to activate. What if I run out of keys and oh uh, no and to make things clear, this is pretty convenient. Yes, you have a key, you you got with your purchase, you put the key in and you're good to go. You can play online, you can play offline, and you can even go for, I think, two um, simultaneous installations. So if your friends are visiting, if your relatives, if you want to play with your dad, with your son, whatever, you can install it on a second system and go for multiplayer action. And this is even a big advantage in comparison to Steam or something. In Steam, it, uh, something like this is not possible. And I'm not sure exactly how this key system works. I think there are some... Um, the keys reset after a specific time, uh, amount of time, and uh, so you... So and and then you can... you have, or again, you I don't know, four shots left or whatever. But though I... I personally don't, would recommend you don't put too much folk into it. Um, there was one time I think with Red Thunder I've installed Combat Mission Red Thunder. And there was a time I had to ins I installed two times on an old system. Then a month later I bought a new syst computer system and installed it. Installed it. I did a lot of um, pointless installs and wasted my keys. And I indeed then get the message that my keys are that I have no, no, no activations left. And I contacted these guys here on this um, help desk and they said, okay, fine, no problem. Pause us your key and you, and, um, and I, under one day res uh, they resetted, re resetted my key and I was good to go. Yes, and uh, like I said, you can move the folder around your system. Obviously, if you move the folder to another computer, you need to reactivate Natural, naturally, and you can play offline, online. You, you know, Steam offline mode is also sometimes sketchy. And other games I've recently played, Modern Warfare. You need to be always online, even for the single-player campaign. And combat mission, sh combat mission games. You can play always in every condition, every country, whatever. So I think that's completely fine, and it's a very it has a small community. The prices are um, for some. The prices are in a, in a higher in a higher sector, but you. I think they're to totally reasonable for the comment uh, for the content you get. You get as you see on my channel how much time I already invested in the combat mission, especially into single games like Shock Force, and I lose really quickly interest in games. I've bought so many war games. I played for some hours and period, but uh, these games, especially if you take modding and user content into, into account, uh, they're, they're easily worth the prices. But you know, in a modern time of 90% sales and so, it's sometimes um, perceived as, as, as uh, not appropriate um, by some, and if they wouldn't go for some DRM, I think there would be heavy piracy going on. So that's completely fine and it's not intrusive. That's important for me. It's not hampering your user experience. You know, there are systems like Denuvo where you have to run some background stuff on your PC and you need to do activations. You need to launch Origin or, I don't know, Blizzard Launcher and it becomes really inconvenient. And here you have a folder and launch it like, like in the old school and you, you got to go. There's nothing running in the background, nothing checking if you, you know, it's completely fine. Okay, next point are video driver settings. Before you go completely into your combat mission game, I would recommend to check your driver settings. In this guide I obviously can only give 
um, uh, information about NVIDIA systems. As I use um, NVIDIA and uh, Intel combination on my computer, and yeah, you I would go for 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 more beauty. I set the anisotropic filter to 16, anti-aliasing to 8. I don't use the in-game anti-aliasing. I use NVIDIA anti-aliasing plus reshade anti-aliasing, and everything else is default. Yeah, anti-aliasing override in-game settings. That's it. I don't go for some fancy settings, never had a reason for that. I pl played combat mission games on mediocre systems with pretty weak graphic cards and never had issues. However, I, since years I use Intel and NVIDIA combinations, so I can't give information about um, other combinations and never had trouble with performance. Even on weaker systems, I usually run on 30 plus FP, uh, FPS. And currently, I don't know, depending on the map, uh, between 50 or and 80, it's completely fine. One important thing is, and I mentioned that a lot of people failing at this, um, is if your system has two graphic cards, you know, there are systems, especially notebooks, but also normal PCs, I think. They have an integrated graphic cards, very weak, and they have a dedicated graphic cards, the strong one. And the combat mission games, they are usually not detected by the drivers as being a game that needs the dedicated graphic cards. So they run on the integrated. There are really people who manage to play um, for, for a year or something on the integrated graphic cards and even bitched about that because they didn't because the system didn't detect it. And check the settings if you have two graphic cards and make sure you're running on a dedicated because the combat mission games don't get detected uh, and you need to often to manually set it by adding the executable of your combat mission game and then set it to use the powerful graphic cards or use the dedicated graphic cards. Very important. I don't use FXAA. Um, it blurs out graphics and fonts especially, so I don't use this. Transparency, I don't know if you can try it. I'm, I'm not sure why I have it off. Perhaps I didn't notice a difference, whatever. And that's it. Just nothing complicated, nothing, no rocket science involved. Just this. Okay, game menu options. And in-game options. This two we will tackle in in-game. So let's launch one of these games. Let's go for Fortress Italy. And like I said, this guide is for every Combat Mission 2 game. Um, it's not just for these two games, it is also for your Red Thunder. You can apply everything I said onto every game. Installation, mechanics and activation, whatever, and reshade. It works very similar or exactly the same for every game. Let's deactivate the sound with Alt S. And what you see in the background, the fancy colors are caused by my reshade. Um, I fix it. You need to deactivate your reshade in the main menu, otherwise, you will get some graphical distortions. I will tackle it when we talk about reshade options. The sound is obviously turned off now by me. And yeah, desktop display size, what, what floats your boat. Um, one important setting. First, 3D model quality. I always go improved. I never use the best settings. These settings, they cause minimal graphical uh, differences, especially when it comes to drawing distance of trees and whatever, some terrain features, but they eat your FPS like nothing. Um, and it also has not much to do with how good your system is. You can have quadruple graphic cards, you can have a NASA PC, it will lag out. On small maps you can go for it, um, I sometimes activate it for very small maps. But I value frames over image quality 
I hate to play with lagging games and I need my, I don't know, what's my convenience zone, 40, 50, 60 FPS. And especially for when you are moving a lot with a camera, you notice every, every frame. I go for improved. If you have a weaker system and uh, or even want more frames, you could go even further up. I think there's even a difference between balance and improved, but improved is so my, my uh, sweet spot. And don't go for the, if you have frame issues, don't go for the best settings. Um, it's, it's not worth the price. It's really not worth I know there are some people, they have no problems playing uh, with, I don't know, 5 FPS. Okay, if it's, if it's fine for you, that's, that's cool. But I think a lot of people are like me who need some, need some, some fluidity. Um, and yeah, this, and I can understand why it's causing so many issues. If you start a game, and especially if you have a powerful system, and you see combat mission on screenshots, you think, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a, looks beautiful, but it's not a very taxing game. It doesn't look like, I don't know, some 4K hardcore graphica, graphics game. And I have a powerful system, so your logical assumption is to go for the best settings. I always do that. Uh, so when I launch games and I have a powerful PC, I think, yeah, I go for the best settings. Um, and that's completely fine, but these settings, they are not the best. Uh, you c in, my, in my interpretation, there are some experimental settings, you know, like um, you can go for, but they will hamper your performance and they are also not connected to how powerful your system is, but more, they are more limited by, I don't know, by the, by the engine itself, by the map size and yeah, um, keep this setting in mind, and if you have performance issues, keep it unimproved or even lower. Don't go over it. It is not worth the price. And texture quality has also some some impact, I think. I didn't test it. I always run it at the best. I think balanced you can also do, but you will notice differences on your uniforms, I think, and your vehicles. And I uh, also read that if you go with very bad settings on this, you won't notice some details on the vehicles or on the uniforms. So that's, of course, not accept acceptable, so I go for best. Uh, vertical synchronization, I usually don't like V-Sync. That's derives from uh, play, uh, play when playing first-person shooters. Um, back then in the days it could introduce input lag and whatever and it eats frames in order to sync the mo monitor and the game. Um, I never had, uh, or at least now I don't have need for this, I use um, 120 hertz screen but even if um, two, three years ago when I played on my mediocre systems with 60 hertz I never used the setting I'm tearing, sure there are some people that are very sensitive to Tearing, I never noticed some tearing in my combat mission games. Um, and I also have some, I have the feeling, it's not confirmed, I didn't do tests on it because I don't care, that this is hampering performance and also when you move with your camera, the, the, when you press the right click and pan, pan your camera, that it makes it more inconvenient, I keep it off. Um, same for AA. I use NVIDIA AA and Reshade AA. I don't use the in-game AA. I don't know why. Perhaps some years ago I've noticed that it also eats um, frames in an inappropriate way. You know, for for the visual gain you get the frames are too much frames are, are um, lost. And I'm pretty happy with my NVIDIA AA and with my Reshade so I don't need it. I don't notice checked lines and that's that's fine, but model quality, most important setting for all of your Combat Mission 2 games if you if you need frames. Treat the tail shaders okay, everything fine. Now let's check the in-game settings. Let's go for some campaign. German Luftwaffe. What's this? Okay. Mm. 
Yeah, we already played this, yeah, remember? This Gustav line, converts counter attack. Yeah, that's some, I don't know. Let's check it out. Yes, okay, this setting. Um, you can play combat mission on two, yeah, for the campaigns, these are locked. But you can play every, ah, uh, let's talk about hot seat. Yeah, I think hot seat is a really important, it's, it's not mentioned a lot, but it's a dying culture, a dying feature. But hot seat, I think, I had so much fun times with hot seat games. Especially if you have, if you're visiting somebody or at Christmas, you know, sometimes you're with a family together at Christmas and you want to play some hot seat, play some video game. Um, let's talk about this later. Um, two big ways to play, real-time turn-based. A big, big, big portion plays turn-based. I personally like real-time. Turn-based is too tedious for me, too, too slow. But it has the big advantage. You can take a lot of time for your planning. You can watch re and rewatch your, your turns. I think it's a 60 second turns, how they play out. And watch different angels, how a tank gets hit. In real time, of course, if you miss, sometimes happens to me. Um, also, some tank blows up and you, <laughs> you, may, you, you just hear uh, the, the, the sound and think, oh, damn it. And um, so, it's what floats your boat, it's a matter of taste, matter of play, play style. I'm really happy that they, that they introduced both. I don't know if I would play it if it's turn-based. And turn-based also has a real big advantage. It allows for hot seat play. And that's, that's also where I choose turn-based. Because it's a mix, it's real-time, 60 seconds. But you give the orders turn-based. And, and it's also, um, yeah, that's, I play real time, skill, yeah, there are skills um, especially impacting how the spotting works, I play elite, this means you need to spot everything and to get visu visual confirmation before engagement, etc. That's why the icons change a lot and every unit has its own spotting, combat mission doesn't come with the spark spotting. Um, some dude on the front sees five tanks and suddenly your complete army group knows the, f the exact position of the five tanks like in the old combat mission games. I think this is really important, not many games uh, model this. This opens up a lot of tacti tactical considerations. You need to get units each other, they communicate, they talk with each other. Um, some scout sees units, enemy units, either he needs a radio or he needs to personal approach other units to tell them, hey guys, I, I have the position of five tanks and the information can get sketchy, you know, because they are not good at, at or they don't ha have some visual means to to acquire the position. They say, hey, behind the hill somewhere I saw five tanks. And and the, and the company asking behind the hill where yes yeah, somewhere there beside the river uh huh okay and it helps with spotting and the unit it's really great it's it's a game in in the game you know to get your units together I love this detail and it's unique I don't know another game and there's even an there's even one difficulty higher I would play it but it's visually very inconvenient for me to play iron um, in iron also your units need to spot each other um, what this that means is in true war units also lost contact to each other and they obviously don't know where for, for example squad one is moving left of the hill squad two is moving right on the hill and squad one can predict where squad 2 is but they don't know exactly if squad 2 got pinned down or if squad 2 is already um, further away so even units need to need to spot each other uh, in order to gain information what does exactly this changes for for the player i'm not sure i really wanted to dig a bit into the iron mode um, it's um, I don't want to go too deep into it because it's very advanced mode. I just recommend all players to start at on Elite if you have and to use the the in-game campaigns and tutorials. 
the games come with uh, with great introduction campaigns and and briefings, and that um, in the in the in the in the manual use them together and you will learn a lot. Even advanced players can learn something from them. And yeah, I play Elite. Iron is when you click a unit, you don't see your other force anymore. You see what they see, and yeah, it's hard to explain. Um, in words, you need to see it, then you understand it. Uh, let's go with Alita, uh, campaign briefing, loading screen. If somebody can, be, can give me a really good um, summary on what, between Alita and Iron, what it changes really for the definitive player experience. Or what further challenges it introduces? I'm sure. Yeah, sure. You need to keep cohesion between your units, otherwise you may lose contact to them. And you can introduce the house rule that when if a unit is out of con uh, contact, you permit yourself, uh, you den deny yourself from using it. Yeah, I think that's 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 the quintessence I've dr I've drawn out of it. So. Okay. Good. We have some combat uh, sound. Uh, let it off. Engines are roaring. Okay. In-game settings. Um, your biggest friend is, uh, is here. Menu and hotkeys, and you can check it for for yourself. Um, important keys are Alt W for the shadows. This can also help with some scenarios, big scenarios with a lot of buildings and units and you lagging turn the shadows off check it out can give you a big performance boost especially in shock force mode scenarios or, or every mode scenario huge map this i also use this sometimes and also about the shadows in most games they look really great uh, in shock force 2 i think it has something to do because they ported it from shock force 1 to shock force 2 Depending on the light conditions, you know, the shadows are real-time, depending on where the sun is, is located. In Shock Force 2, the shadows can look sometimes very distorted. Especially when the sun is low and casting long shadows, they are flickering and look strange. So I sometimes deactivate them there because they, look, they don't look great enough or are disturbing. In the, in the other releases I didn't notice that much shadow issues like here they look pretty fine and they add a lot to visual fidelity and um, another setting is Alt R is shaders on I always play with shaders on gives some gives some depth some further visual you see the buildings um, this the sun is coming from here so this looks way more you see the sun is um, making it here more brighter, but here it's in the shadow, it looks more realistic. It's also depending on the game and on the conditions, sometimes units get overly dark, but yeah, it depends. And vehicle, yeah, whatever. It looks darker and units look darker, some, that's perhaps a reason why some don't like the shader. I'll play the shader on most times as you see this is the sun side this is the shadow side and if you turn it off guy is basically not having a shadow side but it's also questionable if at 10 o'clock yeah whatever it's a matter of taste do what you want and play play what 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 drives your tank <laughs> and that's it i use right mouse for quick movement right mouse is panning the camera I sometimes even hold it mouse scrolling mouse scrolling for zooming sometimes I use QE for fine-tuning the panning but most times right mouse and some guy gave me a good tip um, tap is quick you can with tap you can go quick to the to the unit it's uh, and locking it and when you move with your VSD you're free again uh, one thing I don't use, but I don't like it, it often causes, if you misclick units, 
If you double click first mouse, mouse key, you move to this location. Sounds convenient, um, but if you sometimes, I'm playing very quick. I'm not the guy who planning five hours every move. I like to play in a quick and um, opportunity style uh, of yes. And if you want to click for uh, yes units, you can select directly, or you can select the the icons. That's not the standard icons I use for most of my games. I use um, what's the name? Lieutenant smash, lieutenant smash, smash floating icons and I use the basic settings without the national flags there's one version when you click them you see a German flag there as background I like this the most and I use tactical symbols I like tactical symbols and um, yeah I'm used to them however what I wanted to say if you miss you click then you reset your camera I would like to deactivate this double click feature and as I said, sometimes if you click very fast, okay, I don't manage it now. You misclick first time, second time, and you, your camera is reset. Um, happens sometimes to me, but it's a matter of precision, whatever. It's not a bug or something, it's not, it's a, it's a very small thing. And that's it. Yeah, reshade. We will talk about this. And Alt M, yeah, some, uh, let's, Alt M is a movie shader. Um, also, matter of taste, some like it, some like it not. And you can mod it. We will see what mod movie shader I'm using. I like this one. I've, um, it's also modded. And um, yeah, adds contrast. It's, it's like a movie filter, like you have new movies or on photographs. And it can also make things darker, so whatever. You, your taste, you can always activate and deactivate it. That's it. That's for the settings in game. I don't think there's anything important. Always check the condition screen. It's important to see how fast your units will fatigue and ground conditions um, if your vehicles will get stuck. But the rest you will find in, in other tutorials. In, or like I said, I recommend to you play the introduction campaigns. Every almost every combat mission game comes with an introduction campaign and a supplementing manual section. Use it, print it, or load it onto your smartphone while playing. It's really helpful, and you also get introduction into tactics. And the campaign is cool. They have stories. It's not like move to this point, but it's some background. I like it. A campaign, a tutorial com combined with a um, campaign and narrative. You have perhaps one thing some new players don't know. Target arc is this stuff here. You know, you can create hold fire orders, or if you make a small one, you can also give them a direction to look, or you can give fire arcs. And if you hold shift while giving the order, you get this this one. So you can, for example, you don't want to waste your anti tank weapons, and you can give them. Uh, order or you want tanks don't to engage infantry they they are free to engage a complete map but you don't want them to engage infantry you know sometimes tanks fires at some dude who uh, at some straggler and um, everybody knows that there's a tank around and he may get spotted faster you can also use armor target arc very important for AT guns very important for AT guns press shift and give uh, movement uh, give this for your complete map I also recommend to play with Alt Z visible command links. You see, these are the command links. That's the that's a HQ tank, and here that's his subordinate tanks. And if you press him, you see the line is going to him because he is the HQ. And and um, this the the brightness of the lines tell you how good they are in contact. Um, the more dark they are. The verse is the contact. These guys are connected through radio. Radio is good, but let's see if I can change this by opening up. So you see, it got brighter because this guy can now connect directly. Um, if you open up a tank, uh, tank guy, uh, tank crew can um, 
communicate you know, already get far uh, communicate with the let's get the guy in, into the turrets got he hit no and um, they can communicate with the surroundings with infantry you know and also with other p and tanks and the brightness of the line tells you how good the contact link is and this affects sharing and also effectiveness you always want to keep this in in shape if possible and this is yeah especially on elite and iron this is important and yes you see um, these guys have good the platoon commander these two units are very close he can talk to them hey Jürgen what's going on but these guys are I don't know a lot uh, very far and you they just have uh, forgot if, well, I've also modded this I think it's Juju's 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 uh, um, interface mod perhaps I butchered the name and they are far away the Rhine is letter that's the reason why I like to play with this and one additional setting I use is um, I forgot the hotkey because I always turn it on and the game saves it for most times is All move paths is on. Um, you can give move paths, and you will see the move paths of all units when you select one unit. You see the move paths. When I think that's a really good middle solution. The map isn't always cluttered with the move paths, but if you select a unit, you see all, and can it helps your planning. You know, okay, you see these two tanks move there. Okay, let's come, uh, whatever. And. Uh, Alt B, you don't see. Um, there are some dark maps, and if they are too dark for you, uh, for for enjoyment, you can use an Alt B mode. It makes your map artificially bright. However, check the hotkeys. And Alt T is an important key also if you um, want to disable trees or just nearby trees. You see that there are trees, and you move closer, they disappear. It helps especially when you playing in dense woods and you don't want always to 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 uh, keep the map because on from the higher side you don't see what's going on and you need to go down and what the, uh, how are my units positioned you don't see in uh, in what direction they are looking so you can disable the trees and but this leave the stumps on it still gives you the idea where is the woods very helpful very cool sitting for example you you don't want to exit the woods could go here because the wood is still there. It's t told by the street a uh, tree um, stumps. That's it. Uh, I think, like I said, look at the screens. No, it's no rocket science. Um, you will find out, test out every key, see what happens, and um, a message is always displayed here when something happens. You see artificial bright night graphics on off on off movie filter on off on off really don't need a, a scientist diploma for this um, you will you get it sorted out okay reshade next reshade reshade um, yeah google is your friend um, you google it you find a reshade download it then simply start it, select a game. You will go for some for one of your combat mission games. Needs to install separately for every combat mission game. And then important, select OpenGL. And combat mission is an OpenGL based game. Then you will ask to install effects. Install either all effects if you're new to this or if you're already advanced and know what effects you want to enable. Um, install install the effects of your desire. Then to check if it's okay. You are in your combat mission folder and whatever, which one you will see a reshade shader, shaders folder in the main root director directory, and a open GL32 DLL, and that's it. And you launch a game. And first, what you will see is some flower power graphics, and wonder what the hell is going on. It's usually looking like this, take some time. To build up, ok, 
but yeah, this here. And you will wonder well, what's going on. Um, reshade is automatically on if you start the game after first install, and the main menu suffers from some from some issue um, where the graphics get distorted by reshade on. It's not not a biggie. In game, you don't have this. You also don't have this in briefing screens. Just in the main menu screens. And yeah, it can get quite heavy, like here. You don't see your menu, you can still scout with your mouse. But in order to fix this, you I think the new key is position one. You can open up and you will see some tutorial. You can, yeah, 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 thank you. And first important is go to settings and set a effect toggle key. I have it on Shift F3. In order to use the toggle, to disable your reshade temporarily for the menu. Okay, we will do this, shift F3, it's disabled, you don't see it. And then you need to locate an interactive button, no matter which one. Here, off, and press it, and it's gone. Likely the engine um, refreshes the background as soon as you touch an interactive screen. It's some U UI pro coding stuff, no need to know it. Simply, we do it again, I activate it. Now you all know there are people who restart the game or even kill kill the task because they, they think they're stuck. And now you're not stuck. Disable the reshade with your toggle. Shift F3, find some button, no matter which one, off and you're okay. And leave it off when you are here. Let's start the campaign again. This screen, I think, suffers also, the campaign screen. But if you go over an interactive element, I've disabled it, and it's gone. Sometimes you need to press it, sometimes not. Okay, and let's load it again. To uh, and reshade, I don't need to explain it really. Um, that's hard. It, it makes the graphics more beautiful. Uh, um, according to the, to your taste, and there are a lot of options. You can do it the basic way, like I will show you. I'm not invested into fine-tuning the settings. There are some reshade pros that can set, and there are uh, download and whatever. The, I think there are also some profiles you can download from 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 the forums and from the users. Here you can activate it again. You see there's something happening on the screen, but it's not our aim to improve the campaign screen. Sometimes I even turn it off because it's very bright. Um, on this one, simply make a hotkey and you're good to go. And in-game, to see to see that's the difference, we see we see some lighting. If you see you can see jacked lines here. They are a bit here on the on the roof there, you see? Um, perhaps you can't see it on YouTube, but they are straightened out on the tanks. It looks very, very more jaggier here, and if you turn it on, it's a bit more smooth, whatever. You can achieve a lot with this tool, you can achieve less with this tool, and you can go just for some effects. I will show you now my effects. Ah, okay, that's impossible. That's my active... Uh, one important setting for combat mission, the standard setting is... I think this here. I'm not sure. Block input when cursor is on overlay. Oh. And your camera will turn like this. I think that's the standard setting, I'm not sure. And in order to prevent this, go to settings and set this to pass all the input. This means your input is still in game, it can sometimes be, but you will you will manage it. Yeah, come on. And you will have you can navigate the screen while you are also in game. I think it's even convenient because I can go close to you and check how they look. And you can in real time activate eff effects and turn it off. You see here. Um, once I say ambient light off, ambient light on, some people say I think this off looks it better, it's not so bloomy, yeah, whatever. <coughs> and you can for real time check. Um, of course, you need to watch all this, you don't, if you touch the edges, it will move something, or if you scroll here, I, or move the mouse, you know, it moves your game to also. And that's my effects. I, use them standard, like they are shipped with reshade. In the down box you can set everything to your liking and you can, I don't know, if for example the bloom, yeah, the bloom is too much for you, bloom intensity, I don't touch it because I don't want to, okay, you have a default button, let's do it. You see, I can set the blooming for myself, I'm a very bloomy guy, 
I like the dream uh, the dream version of my Italy. You know, back in the days when I was in the war, and you have your dream dream simulation. Oh, oh okay, <laughs> yeah, we back back in back to default. Um, eye adaption, I think, very useful for night missions. Um, it helps to brighten the screen, and also if you go for, from dark to Okay, it's 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 very nuanced. You can make it more sharp. I usually prefer to play it more sharp, but I've noticed on YouTube sometimes the um, very sharp games and sharp pixels are not good for video streaming. And so I have some uh, technical law you can enable. It looks some more. I yes, that's also a setting I like. Some say why why you took the color. I like it. I don't know. It's a bit too much perhaps now but you can set it but for I think for the Mediterranean some colors some more colorful setting is pretty good there are a lot of settings and test them around if you want to go with my graphic settings use them one important thing is ambient light perhaps ah, okay I have it on cold I usually use on warm and you need to activate dirt yeah, that's you see it's more it's more it gives you a warm impression here. And I don't know, it's perhaps too red. You can set the colors. But I like it, it gives me some this summer Mediterranean feeling. And I think like I said, it's a matter of taste, but for me reshade I'll, and I'll use it alongside the movie shader, you see, I think they both go get good along together. And for me, this two, this two, uh, this movie shader and, and this reshade instrument helps me to put modern, for me it looks like a game, um, if you, I don't know, play Steel Division 2 or whatever, this, uh, this is a more mainstream, more arcade um, tactical VW uh, World War Two game, and I think if somebody would me show me a screenshot, and I have had no clue, I would say yeah, this game is from recent times. Of course, okay, yeah. looks pretty good, and it is indeed so. Most modern games they use a lot of shading and post processing to achieve graphic looks. The poor textures and poor models, um, perhaps it's too time intensive to 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 make them detailed. There's a lot of effort put on. on Onto this, you can say, of course, it's, it's, um, it's. Mm, you can have different opinions if this is good that they put the effort on this. But yeah, the models look beautiful in this game. The models are extremely detailed in almost all combat mission games, in all combat mission games. And with this, if you see such a screenshot with the soldiers here, it looks like a new game. So sometimes a combat mission looks so, so old. I think together with the settings. It looks for me like a like a current gen game, and yeah, perhaps I I love this game. Perhaps I throw tint glasses on. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, that's my opinion, and I stand stand um, with it. Okay, that's reshade. Is there something else to tell about reshade? Ah, performance impact. Uh, I I no, don't notice some. I've read somewhere in the forum some guy made tests and he noticed two frames. Okay, I've like I said, I can't, I don't notice performance impacts from this. And oh wait, there's there's a setting I forget even. Where's my SMA? Is it here? Here. Ah, okay. Whatever reason, this was not there. So that's even better. There's also an FXAA um, helps to smooth the image. I don't see much difference, but it will look at this. Right, look at the uh, at the font. Yeah, you can see it, but it makes the font harder to read. I don't like FXAA. That's my settings, and so something fancy you can test out. Luma sharpen. Like I said, that's yeah. That's usually I like to play. I like to very sharp, crisp images, but um, I'll perhaps I'll leave it on. I think it's 
but sometimes it can you see the trees in the distance they're getting extremely sharp and it this it can become too sharp if it becomes too sharp it becomes ugly again ugly again yeah, you can go here for your for your there's also some sepia filter you can go full histor full full whatever full nostalgia motion blur yeah if you want to some the drunken experience there's a lot to test and uh, a lot also further shaders to download but for introduction install it set it up set your toggle key use those effects you can start with mine don't and if you have gained some experience or still have more demand you can trim the settings um, whatever I can invest hours but with the basic setting you need if you're good some minutes and um, period don't make it too complicated and that's it you I've used also a lot of different reshade profiles during my process I've played Comet Mission with some high color contrast and now I play again with some more realistic toned down colors I like yeah that's reshade I really like reshade use it for a lot of games um, but there are also people who who um, like to play it the normal way you don't it's optional you don't need to go for it do as you desire your grown up person okay reshade modding and user content okay modding and user content um, we are here in the folder modding works this way in your installation folder there's a data folder there's a I don't know needed to be created I forgot honestly if it's not there create a Z folder and in this you have can put stuff into the game and it will sorry automatically overwrite your um, in-game files and it's very convenient way of modding you, it's basically a built in modding manager and you can also create a backup folder in your main game or wh wherever you want where you can put in mod mods in that you don't want and yeah everything in the Z folder will be called by the game and if, it's a, if it has the same name like some in-game file it will get replaced automatically if you don't like it you simply move it out it's back again easy and I will now you show all of my modding folders um, let's go for some better yeah that's okay um, pause the game whatever I can't give you all the download links sorry um, I will show you the site you can download it oh, let's let's first things first and my mods okay so and yes there's CM mods you can find a lot of mods um, select some game there's some categories but I think some stuff um, there's there, at least from my experience there was some stuff that uh, sometimes um, in the other categories I always go with the overall category Italy and then you can go in the, through the list of mods and yeah it can be if you want to to download something you simply click on it and there's a download link and unpack it Aris did a lot of vehicle his skins are really top notch but also other users that's for the mods but um, it also is a good idea to check the, a lot of the mods um, you won't find or currently won't find uh, on the and yeah that's a link you will find it with Google uh, come on and um, you can go into the forums and there's also modding and scena custom scenario section on every every combat mission game check it out go some pages scroll some pages through sometimes you will find I don't know my mm -hmm, um, modding stuff or uh, my uh, cam new campaign release there are a lot of campaigns you can find custom campaigns I sometimes even discover after years I've discovered new content um, custom content is in, in some forum as um, yeah uh, not everything is on this side here 
and for scenarios there is also the same goes for, for this page here is the link, you can google it for it and you will find a lot of single player scenarios, campaigns, not all like I said, always check the forums page the specific form part and also here very convenient, you can go for um, Italy campaigns for I like campaigns, give me campaigns uh, and you see, okay that's you see some sometimes stuff get wrong, falsely um, um, mistakenly wrong attributed so always check for the others I also found campaigns I think in the single player section yeah under scenarios I found campaigns so um, that was also the reason why one campaign I, I I discovered pretty late and yeah there's something introduction whatever and can download it about the user content and user campaigns you have uh, in your document documents folder folder under your operating system um, hard drive or whatever you have set you find a combat mission folder and yeah, there you find uh, your games you have installed um, and here game files user data okay game files, campaigns, scenarios here, you can put in the stuff like the campaigns, they always be called .cam and they will show up in your game. That's also the reason why it allows you to move your game folders and the stuff is still saved, everything in your in a separate folder and yeah, you can also I think install mods by this I think you can install mods by in the user data, it's obviously good if you have a lot of people playing on your PC and your brother hates your mods or whatever and you don't want to play with his mods you can go for this mod solution I never used it I, I, I suspect you simply move the mods into this location and they also um, have the same the same functionality like the set folder in your in your m root folder test it out I don't need it and uh, however campaigns and scenarios you can move here into these folders and yeah I have a lot of user custom scenarios installed and already played scenarios are here that's are the standard scenarios but you also find your custom scenarios can you, you can put them here saved games and it sometimes makes other sense good saved games it can become quite big I, had, I think my combat mission shock force 2 saved games folder became I don't know several gigabytes so it can, uh, but you can also in-game delete the save games. But if you need a convenient way, you simply go here and swipe one, swipe them away. Yes, mod modding user content, and like I said, you can mod. And uh, there's a lot of mods for. You can mod the interface. You can mod the music. Uh, one standard mod for a lot of games is HQS sound mod, but test it out. There are also new sound mods coming up by um, the Heaven and Earth mod. Yeah, and it's one download you can use for several games. There's only a difference between World War II games and modern games because the weapons changed and so they made two different versions, one for the World War II games, one for the modern games. You don't need to download, it's a big download, you don't need to download it for, se for all games. There are winter mods, there's everything. If you want to, um, yeah, it's, it's so much to explore. Perhaps launch a game, play a campaign in standard, um, uh, some, uh, and or, or go for modding instant, but uh, for instantly whatever um, decided for yourself. But to, in order to see the difference, Japanese manual translation also cool <laughs> to know that this exists. That interface mods different. Um, do you want some more modern black interface for Italy? Go for, with this, and there's um, and the the mod I'm using. I think that was called something like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's my. I like this one. There are also several several games, and yeah, I think this looks really beautiful. And you can also set a lot of icons. Some of the mods come with options, so don't throw them into your Z folder. 
I won't go into detail. I think some stuff always people need to figure out on themselves because if you do only do hand holding, people don't learn to think for themselves. I know it's, it's the, uh, yeah, it, it can be much, but come on, if you insert mods, check the folder, what's in there. And sometimes if there's option A, option B, option C, you obviously need to install one option. And even if you put a mod folder in, you can't, uh, from what I know, it's basically Im impossible to crash or to break your game with, with this, because even, for example, you download a mod, and that's why it's so straightforward and good. You download a mod and it comes with, I don't know, uh, five different churches that replace each other. The game, was, uh, the, the game engine will simply go through all folders and use the last ones. And you maybe not notice, I'm pretty sure I also have folders here and won't notice that there, there are a lot of, um, because my mod folders are really big and messy and they're redundancy, obviously redundancy. But it's, the game will call simply the last file. One thing here good to mention is um, the hierarchy. You see, I have a lot of sets here. That's not because I don't know. Um, got a stroke while typing. That's um, I want this folder to load last because it's my testing folder, and I want I put stuff into this like my um, camouflage tiger. I don't want to get overwrited by other mods. So if you have a mod, you can create hierarchy with Z or I don't know if, if you like X more use X. Uh, Z is obviously the last letter in the alphabet, so you use Z, and and yeah. So if you, for example, have a winter mod, and you want your winter mod to to load, la load last, create a lot of sets, and it also doesn't play a role if you see the textures are directly here, but also could play create a co folder called textures, and put them also in. The game intelligently looks through the mod folder and collects files that are. It, it looks for the file na names, not for the folder structure. That's really good. So if you have um, a lot, a, a typical um, error when installing mods is the folder and folder error. You know, you're unpacking your, you're unpacking your 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 zip file. And how oh, I can show you that. And it looks like this. You unpack your gloves folder and you have another... I can't do it, I don't know why. Um, whatever. You, un you unpack your, your, your folder, gloves folder, and why is it not gone? It must be... Ah, okay. That's inter interesting. I can't copy a folder into in. Okay, never tried this. And you have the double folder. It's this double fo folder error, um, which happens often by unpacking because these unpacking tools give you this unpack into here or unpack into a folder. And you save from this in combat mission. It's really straightforward. You could also name the folder here. Oh, jeez. could name it, um, I don't know, Funny Wiener. And you could put everything into this. And I will leave it funny wiener, and it will load still will load this 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 textures. It won't call. Um, there's no error to be produced by this. So I never I can't tell for sure if there's a way to botch you install by bots, but I never managed this. So <laughs> yeah, I think if you're somewhat if you if you um, if you're somewhat yeah know what you're doing or even if you don't know what you're doing I, when I started with modding I simply downloaded all mods I found and unpacked everything and threw it into my Z folder and good to go what you see here is also the product of some of this I never checked them again and whatever I s and if I have mods dedicated I either use my Z folder can also call it last whatever or xxxx last. Um, yeah, there's something you can also throw files into the basic folder. You don't need to create folders. You see, there's a lot of files from million of mods uh, simply in my base folder sitting. It can have the advantage that you then notice if there are 
um, read the dances, whatever. Download the mods you like, put them, unpack them, put them into your Z folder. And yeah, that's I really like this about this game. It's not you need not to remain the, 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 the some folder structure or whatever. Okay. And second, mod tools. All your combat mission games ship with mod tools. Um, res explored these back. Let's use some small patch BSC to test this. So if you want to, to work or to mod, to skin, whatever, or to work on a model of one of your Italy games, you can copy this, go to your mod tools, put it here into input, press explode, no, your PC won't explode, and then it's unpacked, it's like like some sort of zip for the game, um, arch arch archive, and there's the content of not all content of the patch but the content you the, you can you can mod and if, I don't know you want to mod your pirate silhouette of the pirate you want to make it colored or whatever you can do or you can work on the on the files for your two inch mortar and yeah straightforward if you want to get into modding and respec is I think yeah, if, if you want to pack something and again, I don't know if and yeah, sample mod files, whatever. So the game even comes with modding tools. It's also really great, and you can put your data files. There's there's the the, the content of your vehicle stored into these files. You need to find yourself. A, you can also do copy everything of your data files and put them into input. It will take a minute or so depending on your hard drive and everything is exploded into folders and you can check for so for yourself if you want if you're an advanced user and want to do some modding and to recolor some of your vehicles and I've did also some um, on my channel you can find some some under the experiments I playlist I think you can find some uh, videos how to quickly and easy way without a lot of artistic um, skill or Photoshop skills, how you can uh, mod or change textures, for example, to winter or to desert, whatever. For example, for Italy, you want to create more desert skins. Uh, I think the upcoming Rome to Victory will perhaps give the, some, I'm not sure, but for you want to create, a, I don't know, desert, Ita Italy, Italy versus a des des desert scenario, you could do some desert skins if needed or whatever. Okay, my mods, last thing. Um, let's check my modding folders. I won't say much to it. You can take a look and and go to CM mods and try to find them, or to the forums and find them, but it's a lot often requested. What's what you what's your mods? Uh, yeah, what's your mods? I have one million mods, dude. I want a complete list of what. So I will give you basically what I always do when this um, when when somebody asks this is um, give you a list of my mods. That's the best I can do. Okay, that's my combat mission Afghanistan folder. close those folders here so I have some space. Next, my Black Sea folder. Plus space to powers and yeah. Some folders in here aren't um, mo uh, permanent mods. One thing to mention is there is a mod tech system in the game also very good. So, for example, you see, let's test it out here, T90s, they have uh, bracket snow. This is a snow skin for a T90 of Black Sea, and it will get only triggered if the scenario designer uses snow in his, or in his campaign, or in his scenario, use the Motex snow. Um, easy words, you can create triggers or conditions, for example, you don't want a snow, tur a snow T90 in your usual summer scenario, so and 
um, if you do a winter scenario you can trigger it with the snow it won't load without the snow mod tag that's really good so this ch this mod is for this folder is for example for um, for the russian chechen che chechnya che chechnya campaign and most of the stuff in here won't load without the triggers uh, without the mod tags okay next one Blitzkrieg. Cut down stairs in list here. About the effects, I really like the dust and smoke of Arvis mod. Really like it. And um, for the tracers, I, I I didn't replace them, but I like the tracers of. Um, the HE mod, um, the package that comes with it, um, I think it's a separate download and because they make a, a very small trace, they look very realistic um, HE mod traces, I want to use it for all of my CM games and also muzzle flashes everything, but um, snow and dust I really like ours and some mo um, Many mods, like for example Tracers or um, several mods, are also compatible with different combat mission games. Combat mission Fortress Italy. Battle for Normandy. Red Thunder and these mod folders are messy. There's perhaps stuff double, triple, and I didn't um, tidy them up to make them to make them looking good. Uh, it's, I don't have a reason. Like I said, the system is very intelligent. The mod the mod loading system of the co of combat mission. Yeah. So, but you will see some stuff here, Kemas mod, buildings mod, Ares vehicle mods, UUs, um, posters and whatever. Yeah, winter mod, winter mod is also only cold when you have winter mod tags, so you will get an idea. Thanks a lot, buildings, whatever. And yeah, it's of course, yeah, okay, that's it. Red Thunder, next one, Shock Force 2, last one. Okay, in Shock Force I have some, I think I have some um, subfolders, or a lot of subfolders, where is it? Yeah, I've, I think I removed some mods for, for, the, for, for the guide, ah, vehicle replacements, that's my vehicle replacement mods I usually use. These two you don't need. Uh, simply, I sometimes like to keep keep zipped file uh, zip files into the folder so I can quickly unzip them and they are active. And I also like to create. For example, I plan a playthrough. I recently did Operation Badas in Sierra Leone, and I create specific mod folders, uh, mod folders for this play playthroughs quickly on the fly. Put everything in I want, and perhaps do a lot of zzzz so it is loaded last, or simply put it into my zip folder, into my zip testing folder, and then I copy the backups from the backup. I simply copy it in the game. I'm ready to go. Or my winter mod. If I want to continue my winter campaign, I simply would take this folder and move it to my last Ariki mod, and I'm good to go. That's my personal mod management. But that's advanced stuff. You don't need to do this. You can go with a. Um, I'm. I like to experiment. 
and I like to do a lot of visual variety, variety, you know, play in the winter, play in the summer, and so um, you don't need to do. It. You can go with one fix set folder setup you have, and good, good, good to go. Yeah, that's it. I think we got everything. Yes, if you okay. See you.